Today I'm sharing a list of 15 supplies to pack for your baby when starting them in a child care program. This isn't just a simple checklist. I'm sharing insight from a child care provider's perspective, so I'm giving tips and details about the best items to pack for the child care environment that the average parent might not think of. First up is bottles. You'll want to check with the child care center if they require pre-made bottles or if the teachers can prepare them at the program. For formula-fed babies, some programs require the bottles to be pre-made at home and brought in, while some will allow you to bring in a can to leave at the program. For breastfed babies, bring in extra bags to leave in the freezer at the center as backup. Their little bodies are growing fast and sometimes the amount that they drink throughout the day can increase quickly over a short period of time. Make sure you label both the bottle and the cap and make sure you pack enough to get your baby throughout the day based on how many hours they will attend the program. Believe it or not, sometimes we run out and those babies are not happy campers. Number two is food if your baby has begun to eat solids. Super important tip. When your baby starts eating solids, make sure to send food to the program that he or she has already tried at home. You don't want to introduce new foods for the first time at the child care program. Can you imagine the dreaded phone call that you would receive that your child is on the way to the hospital in an ambulance because they had an adverse reaction and a new allergy to a food that they're just trying for the first time and you're not with them? Another tip is that your child's teacher will greatly appreciate it if you cut up the food in small pieces before sending it in. There's a lot of babies they're taking care of and a lot of individual feeding schedules. So pre-cutting your baby's food is a huge time saver for a busy classroom. Plus, as scary as to think about, there could be newer or less experienced staff that don't think to cut the food in really small pieces that would be appropriate for your child's age and development, which could result in choking. Again, unfortunately, I'm speaking from experience because I've seen this happen. I would definitely advise taking every precaution. Some centers provide utensils for your child, while others require the parents to send them in, so make sure to ask about that. And be sure to label all of the containers or pouches or whatever it is that you send in. Labeling the lunchbox only isn't sufficient. For example, I see many infant classrooms take food and snacks and put them in bins in the fridge for easy access instead of leaving them zipped up in a lunchbox or in the child's cubby. To avoid any food accidentally getting lost or served to another child, label everything. Third is sippy cups if your baby is drinking from one. The ones that don't spill when they tip over will be greatly appreciated by your child's teachers and of course label that too. Fourth is bibs, lots and lots of bibs. Be sure to label those as well, either on the tag, on the silicone, or on the cloth directly. A lot of moms use those silicone ones that hypothetically catch the food nowadays, which also can help clean up even a little bit. Five is burp cloths. If your child still needs to be burped, pack those as well. Label those also, and give your child care teachers a heads up if your child is extra spitty and send extra burp cloths in as well. Number six, multiple changes of clothes, with emphasis on the multiple. Some babies go through several outfits a day as you may experience at home. Their diaper can go through their clothing several times, they get messy while eating, they can spit up on themselves. So one change of clothes is definitely not enough. Make sure to pack several pairs of all clothing items, onesies, pants, shirts, and socks. And if they run out of clothing, they'll either be stuck in a messy outfit, they'll have them just in the diaper only, or they'll have to borrow clothes from another child, which isn't ideal. Seven is diapers. Now you don't want to pack diapers every single day. You'll want to stock up and leave a good amount at the center. Depending on the amount of storage space in the classroom, some programs will allow you to just drop off a big bulk box from BJ's or Costco's to just leave at the center. And please, on behalf of all childcare teachers, please don't send the diapers that slide on and off and don't tear on the side. You have to get the child completely undressed, take off their socks, their shoes, pants, onesie, everything. It's such a pain. Even if the teachers are super polite and they tell you, oh no, it's fine, it doesn't matter, it's totally fine. When you're not there, trust me, they're definitely talking about how annoying it is. Just being straight up. Number eight is wipes. It's great to send a few packs of those as well to stock up and of course label them. Many teachers use the wipes not only when changing your child's diaper, but also to like wash their hands. It's easier than bringing them to a sink and attempting to wash, but to wash hands after they change your diaper and also to clean them up after eating. So they do tend to go through them quickly. Number nine, diaper creams, ointments, and baby powder if needed. Most over-the-counter ointments are fine. There's a simple form for parents to complete, authorizing that the teachers can put it on your child. If you bring ointments that have the word medicated on it, then usually a doctor's order form or prescription is required for it. Again, make sure you label those and don't send any new creams or ointments for the teachers to put on for the first time, again, in the event that your child has an adverse reaction to it. Number 10 is a pacifier. Please, please, please use the kind of pacifier that clips onto their clothing. There's a lot of babies in the classroom and passies are frequently 
drop from the floor and like the second they drop a mobile baby is running towards it they're on it and it's in their mouth before the teacher even sees that it happens it happens often and it's gross so clip-on is the way to go so it always stays with your child and you guessed it label it next is a crib sheet the crib sheet should be fitted in the exact size of the mattress it shouldn't be loose which isn't safe and is a suffocation hazard Crib sheets are usually sent home once a week to launder. Some programs do provide a crib sheet and launder them there, so just check with the program. Number 12, which is optional, a blanket or soft comfort toy for your child to have, but note they can't have it with them in their crib, but they can have it with them when they're awake. Another optional item, if your child is having a hard time transitioning, leave a piece of your clothing with your scent on it at the program. And if your child is crying a lot throughout the day, ask the teachers to hold your baby with that piece of clothing. May sound crazy to some, but it's a tried and true method. Number 14, seasonal items such as a coat, a hat, a sun hat, sunscreen if they'll be going outside, and shoes for going outside, especially if your child is walking. Teachers can't always take them outside because there's so many individual schedules throughout the day. It doesn't often line up that every child is fed, doesn't need to change, isn't napping all at the same time. But most programs do like to get them outside in the fresh air, of course, weather permitting year round. So you'll want to pack whatever clothes are needed for your baby to be comfortable outside. And number 15, also optional, medication if your child needs it for a chronic illness or condition. For over-the-counter medications such as teething gel or gas drops, you'll want to check with the center's director or nurse if those are allowed and what forms are required. Be sure to check out my video about the processes and procedures for sending medication to childcare and what forms are required. And a bonus tip, while it isn't required, some parents like to drop off all the supplies in advance on their child's visit day or just any time before their child's first day. That way, if they miss any items, instead of not having it on their child's first day, they can bring it on their first day. And also because on the day of, emotions are going to be high, a lot of parents get emotional leaving their child with another caregiver for the first time. So it's nice to focus on that transition and getting them acclimated, talking with their teachers, rather than trying to unpack an abundance of supplies. All right, get your phone ready to take a screenshot. I'm going to put a comprehensive list on the screen to recap everything that we went over. And three, two, one. If this video was helpful, be sure to give me a like, share this video with a friend, and subscribe to my channel for more childcare tips and tricks for parents. I wish you and your child, your family, nothing but health and happiness, and see you next time.